Mr. Dow, what would you say is the difference between a supportive woman and a... Taste. Absolutely. Taste. You see, a supportive woman always performs effortlessly. Mm. But a pushy one always appears to be perspiring. Now, shall we have a look at the plaster and paint? The plaster? Oh, uh, no. Um, when I said reconstruction, I'm, well, I didn't mean reconstruction. I meant, I meant reconstruction of the house staff. Uh, you see, the current housekeeper has no idea that she's being let go. Uh, Mr. Dowd, I wonder if I could ask you a great favor. Well, I should be happy to try. Well, you see, sometimes, well, I don't know if you've noticed, but I, I tend to get a little bit nervous. It's just because I want so much to, well, to encourage my husband. Mr. Dow, if you see me getting, well, if you see me perspiring. Ah, Mrs. Gorick, it would be my privilege to help you remain cool at all times. Thank you, Mr. Dowd. <laughs> now, why don't I go and dismiss your housekeeper? No, I mean, thank you very much, but, but you see, that current housekeeper just happens to be my, a relative. So I think it'd be better if I did it myself. <laughs> This is great. He's going to love it. He touches everything he sees. Oh, <laughs> oh I wish you were awake. I just want to give him a great big squeeze. <laughs> You'll have lots of chances to do that. Just check out what Johnny brought him. A bat in the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and Maeve hasn't stopped knitting since Jonna walked into the bar with Oni. <laughs> I think everybody's got baby fever or something. Oh, not everyone. Maggie would rather have the black plague. Really? Well, maybe in a year or two. Or 30. <laughs> well, let me tell you, she doesn't know what she's missing. I mean, once you hold one of those little things in your arms, well, you're in honor. I keep remembering holding Edmund. I wish I could have held him. Just mm. once. Sometimes I... I don't know, I wonder what he... What about you and Dakota? Hmm. Well, have you talked about having a child? No, Mom, of course I haven't. What do you mean? What do you mean, of course you haven't? I see the way you look when you, when you hold little Oni in your arms. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, it's not my baby, it's somebody else's. I don't have the responsibility. Now, I don't believe that, and you don't either. I know very well you want to have your own child. And there's no reason why you can't. There are lots of reasons. Uh, well, could it be the fact that um, maybe you're not so sure about the man you're living with? Mama, I'm, I, I'm just laying it on the table. You know as well as I do that if you want to have babies, you have to believe that you're, you're with the right man. If you think this isn't the right man, well, maybe you ought to do something about it. Mama, the subject is closed, okay? The last thing I need in my life is any more changes or a baby. Well, if you want my opinion. Mama. You know you're going to get my opinion. <sighs> Saved by the bell. Oh, you. <laughs> It's hard to track you down. Everybody said, find the baby, you'll find Jill. Oh. Oh. Hi, honey. Oh, you want to see the little guy? Uh, he's asleep now, but he's a living doll. I, I believe in letting sleeping babies sleep. Yeah. Uh, Jill, well, you're sort of a grandmother now, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I guess I sort of am. I couldn't love him more if he was my own flesh and blood. What would the real grandmother say? D? Well, nobody ever knows what Dee's going to say. Anyway, she's not here, so I'm certainly not going to speak for her. Well, I think little Oni is very lucky to have you looking after him. Oh, I thank you. 
Well, is there anything you want? I was just about to leave. Well, yeah, Mama, I wanted to talk to both you and Jill, actually. Oh, so talk. Well, it's not easy. Oh, well, just jump right in. Okay, well, first of all, I want you to know that it uh, doesn't matter to me where Roger and I live. I mean, I'm happy living with him anywhere. We were happy in a jail cell together. Are you being arrested? Jill, come on, this is a very delicate matter I'm trying to discuss here. How delicate? Well, very. It's about the way things are over the brownstone. Now that Roger and I are married, it's, it's just getting a little cramped. <laughs> what do you mean, the same number of people are living there? You've just changed rooms. Jill. That would mean uh, there would be an extra room. We're packed in like sardines over there. Oh, 16 rooms. Awful lot of room for uh, sardines. Oh, Maggie, is, is this really what you want to talk about, or is there something else? Are you, are you and Roger thinking about moving out? Well, no, of course not. The brownstone is the college ancestral home. Roger's father left it to him. <laughs> Our father. He left it to all of us. Oh, of course. Roger and I, well, we're, we're real happy to stay where we are in the downstairs suite. It's just that... Well, now that there's two of us, it's just a little confining. You know, there's hardly any closet space at all. Oh, well, if that's it, why didn't you say so in the first place? I mean, I'll be happy to... No, Mama, wait a minute. Wait a second. Now, is Roger feeling cramped, too, or is it only you, Maggie, that is suffering from this, um, sardine complex? Well, Roger and I have discussed it, of course. But he, he does feel a little sensitive on the subject. It's not just the downstairs basement or apartment. It's not only... Yeah, yeah, well, I, I gathered that. No, wait a second, Jill. I know you think I'm being totally selfish, <clears throat> and you don't want to see that I have Roger's best interest at heart. Look, honey, come on. Is there something else the matter? Last night, Roger entertained a very important business associate of his, Dr. Torpo. Well, you were there, right, Mama? Right, yes. Oh, a wonderful man. Very interesting. So? So I don't want to make it sound like a big deal, but... Well, I just know how Roger feels, and I know he'd like to do a lot of entertaining. But we feel like intruders upstairs. <laughs> Maggie, he's lived in that house his whole life. Why would he feel like an intruder? Because. Because it's upstairs. It's... It's Mama's territory. And last night was okay because Mama was invited, but what if me and Roger wanted to entertain... All right, right, right. Maggie is absolutely right. I mean, th there's no reason I should be included on everything just because I'm her mother and I happen to live there. You see how awkward it is? Right. Well, I think for the time being, at least, I have a solution. Why don't we just switch rooms? I mean, I'll go down to Roger's and, and, and you can come upstairs and... Wait, wait, wait. Just hold it a second, okay? Let's... <laughs> Mama, let's not rush into this, okay? Well, but Maggie feels that... Mama, I own part of that house. And, um... Now that I know what Maggie thinks about this situation, I'd like to talk to Roger and see if he feels the same way. I mean, cramped in that tiny little apartment. 